What do you think, Anna? Did it rained? <laughs> We have actual real mud puddles. We got close to two inches of rain last night, which more than doubles what we've had for rainfall throughout this whole summer since we finished planting. You know, it's a little bit, I think it's too little too late at this point, but it's just, it's good for the soil, it's good for the trees, good for the grass. We needed the rain bad. Oh. Apparently it came with just as much wind as I thought. Today's project might look a little bit familiar to some of you. For those who remember, a couple of years ago we put some uh, G4 stock stompers from May West on our corn header to protect the tires from the stocks as we go through the cornfield. We put a set of six on to protect the tires, but what we've really noticed is it tills better when those stocks are smashed down. So we're going to put a full set of 12 on. We're going to add the other six to the header today. So I got to make some room in the shop, bring the corn header in from the north door because it doesn't fit through these side doors and get everything in there and then I got the people from May West to come and help me. In other words, I just get to do a little bit of John Deere shuffle this morning. It's like it's kind of cool and windy out so it's too cold for a t-shirt but it's too humid for a sweatshirt. I am torn. Almost that time of year. Now, you guys remember in one of the last videos we put the Crary Big Top on. We still got the combine in here. The deal is though, I can't get the header through these doors. So I gotta go out there, hook it up to the combine and come in that door in order to get in here. Looks like we're hooked correctly up here and we're all clear of everything under here. This machine is brand new to us. Uh, we've never had a header hooked up to it yet, so just want to make sure everything looked good. Safety stop to make sure this thing doesn't come crashing down when we're working on it. Look at that. Perfect timing. Or really bad. It is? Yeah. The wind took it down? It all ever got video of it. We did get two inches of rain or close to it, but unfortunately it came with a lot of wind. Our stocks are so brittle and weak from not having any rain the rest of the summer that it looks like a lot of it tipped over. So we'll go take a look at that after we get our installation done here. I don't want to get depressed too early in the day. Go? Yep. How many acres you got off these shoes? I would guess we got 2,000, 2,500 acres on there, somewhere in there. Look at that. You can barely tell there's even anywhere on that. Not bad. Got dirt in here. You're doing good. Great job. I'll, I'll, I'll manage. All right, I'll help.
So there's our center four rows, because we're converting this kit from a six row to a 12 row to go all the way across the header. So now we're gonna be, are we putting in a different bar on the outside or we use the same toolbar? We're gonna put a different toolbar on the outside. Different yeah. toolbar to reach all the way to the ends of the yeah, header. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we're gonna take the old tooling off the toolbar so that we've got the mounts that go to the header. We're just putting in a longer bar. Eric, I got my own impact here to help you out. If you could just do me a favor and not steal it this time. I'll just, I'll write my name on it. <laughs> Last time, it was this impact too. I bought this thing brand new, used it once in the shop with you, right? and then it disappeared for a while. Yeah, I, I couldn't figure out where it went for about six weeks. I watched weeks. you take it out of the box. And you, you thought, hey, I should steal that. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> That's how we get all our new stuff. Uh oh. So these are the next thing then? Yep. Put all these on? Yep. Okay. Uh, pin guard to the right. Pin guard to the right. <laughs> Meanwhile, did you find a bunch of mud back there? Not that much actually. Not that much? No. I don't know if I believe you. Side two should actually be much, much easier. Look at that, I even made Eric disappear. Set it down and see what they look like. Eric's underneath there now with a tape measure. We're just checking to make sure they're level from side to side, kind of make sure the setting's gonna be close. I got the header down probably as low as I would ever run it. A little tough to tell with the snouts up in the air, but just making sure everything looks like it's set correctly. The nice thing is they've got notches on the toolbar that runs across and on the pads themselves, so you can move them, you can adjust them by an inch um, either direction on both of those. So there's a lot of adjustability in them. Those should do a real nice job of protecting the new uh, 800 duels that we got on this thing. Keep those nice. What is that, Eric? What is that? What's what? You just, where did you get this toolbox from? What, what is that? Additional stock stompers are installed to give us a full set of 12 now. And uh, that's gonna be nice. Now I've gotta run uptown and grab Rhiannon from her cheerleading gig. And unfortunately, I suppose I'll probably get to see all the damage done to the corn by the wind we had at about 4 a.m. I was worried about that. Do you wanna come with to get your sister and we'll grab some lunch? All right, you got everything you need? Mom is at a, a port and thing. She's at a what? Mom is at a port and thing. Oh, okay. Even over there. We went over there, but not over there. Twenty twenty one, man. And who could say their name the loudest? Um, Madeline. Well, not really. So the first time, it was... So definitely Madeline, but not really Madeline. Well, no. It was the second, the first time a girl named Haley got it. And then the second, the second time, well, the second time Michaela didn't hear anyone's. Your corn back there got knocked down by the wind. Yes, it did. Very that much helps. so. Very, very much so. Now this field doesn't look nearly as bad as what we had at home. There's definitely some damage there, but this is also healthier corn. You can tell this must have had more rain than what we've had right at the house, because this is a lot greener stuff. 
Oh boy. Seems pretty obvious it's pretty specific to the areas that are drier. The driest spots have the weakest stalks. I think there's also a hybrid issue at play here. I'd have to look and see what hybrids are exactly where, but I think some of them probably broke over a lot worse than others. This field definitely got nailed. It'll be interesting to see how much of that stands up. It's so muddy out in there now, I'm not gonna walk around in it now, and it'll change a lot over the next couple days. If it's not snapped off, a lot of it'll kind of arch back up and stand up, but uh, be interesting. There's going to be a little more difficulty in harvesting the stuff now than what there would have been. But at least we know it's not going to yield very well, so we got that going for us. Thankfully, most of this corn in this field was too short to really catch any wind and tip over. This stuff here is snapped right down towards the bottom, about eight inches up. That's not going to grow back. That's going to lay there and rot. It's going to be tough to pick up. It's going to be like, it's going to be so brittle, it'll just be like breaking glass getting through here. I don't know if we'll get spots like this picked up, but you can see right there where it was a little bit greener, a little bit healthier corn. Apparently the soil is a little heavier there. It was able to find some moisture. That's almost worse for us because we're going to have to fight it to try to get as much as we can versus this. I don't think we're gonna be able to get anything in these spots. There's really nothing we can do about the corn right now, so I may as well go back to the work in the yard here. The corn's gonna do what it's gonna do. Hopefully, a decent amount of it comes back and stands up. Our next project is actually getting the strip tiller out, hooked up to the 9570 and getting that in the shop here because I've got the boys from Red E up in Fargo coming out. We're gonna finish some of the work we got going on that and start making sure that that's gonna be ready to go when the time comes. So. Now I gotta get the combine out of the way. It's a little bit tighter getting the uh, header onto that trailer, getting the feeder house off because we've got those extra stompers underneath the feeder house now, but it's just something, we've got it set just right where it's right there. It's just something we gotta be cognizant, cognizant? I gotta be cognizant to say that word. We gotta watch carefully for it. We got a mess going in the yard. Machinery parked everywhere. Kind of that time of year, I guess. Sheds are empty. We were running short on water. Thankfully our harvest supply showed up so we won't go dry. Now I know the strip tiller is kind of leaned back goofy with the hitch in the air again. I think it rolled, came off the stands. It's a whole thing, but I think I'm gonna have to use this tractor to help the hitch down to get it hooked up. Due to the way I chose to park everything back here, it cannot get the tractor in there, so I'm gonna guess to try a skid steer or something. How many millennial clowns does it take to figure out this strip tiller hitch dilemma? Apparently more than one would be helpful. I'm really hoping this thing will fit in between those two tillage pieces. That way I won't have to move the Mendeco Storm, hook that up and move that, because that's just an additional pain in the neck. What are you doing? Nothing? That's not even your bicycle. I said that's not even your bicycle. Well, I'm gonna go try and hook up a strip tiller. See you later. It's not the right way to do it, but I think it's gonna work. Kind of pick up on the back there and force the back end of this thing up because the jacks don't go down far enough to support the tongue of the air cart, and then the tongue of the strip tiller goes in the air, so we'll get it. Still got old glory strapped to the back of this thing because Isla and I were part of a surprise parade for Jim and his wife Ann who had their 50th wedding anniversary here a few days ago. So if you know Jim and Ann, tell them happy anniversary and congratulations. That doesn't happen often.
that happens. Well, she's out of the weeds. Well, it's 6 p.m. now, late enough in the day. I'm gonna spend some time cleaning the shop here before I bring that thing in. And then I think we're gonna uh, fire up the grill here. It's gonna be a beautiful night to do that. But watch for the next video. We're gonna bring that thing in. We've got some final upgrades to make, make to that machine. I don't have anything else. Thanks for watching. <laughs>